Okay, I'm up in the dunes with uh, Primitive Surf team rider and three-time champion of the Post Coast Challenge, Nick Ditko. Mate, thanks for coming up this weekend, Nick. I'm living on the Gold Coast now, so not eligible to go in the comp. How does that feel? Um, I don't mind surfing every day, so not too bad. <laughs> Small price to pay, I reckon. Last year you were living in Toowoomba, so... Yeah, it's good to actually get wet once a month now. <laughs> At least there's waves this year too, it's really good. Yeah, it's great. We had a crack of a day yesterday and we backed it up with a bit more uh, with uh, waves breaking again today. So, mate, we're just here with your boards and just going to have a look through what you got here. Um, talk us through this one. Uh, this is a sort of an experimental blackbird slash something else with uh, five fin holes in it. Um, I find it goes best with uh, two fins in it. But so I'd, which two fins is that? You just use those big MR twin fins on it? Yeah, the MR twenties, and I don't put the stabiliser in the back. Okay, why is that? The last one went better with the stabiliser, didn't it? Oh yeah, I've given up on that. They just go heaps quicker with just two. Yeah. And yeah, so two fins is a lot faster, and um, they're a bit looser and a bit more difficult to control. But um, once you get used to that, you've just you know the speed. It's it's a good price to pay for that extra speed. Okay, and and the trike quad set up, have you used it as a quad fin at all? Um, I use this one as a quad fin, but um, I found that it was a bit quicker as a as a um, 20, but I haven't really, I don't know, I think I might have the wrong quad fins in it. I've got these really rakey ones with a big inside foil, yeah. that I think are probably suited to more like a like a pintail or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I've actually uh, made one of these for myself as well and I found the same thing. I tried two different sets of quad fins and it went good, but it went better with those MRTXs yeah. and the little stabiliser in the back. Well that's what we're here for, we're nutting it out for everyone else aren't we? Yeah exactly, like, the feedback I get off you is unbelievable and we've been working on a lot of boards and uh, you know, you're the one that originally designed the first Blackbird but it's evolved into something that I shape more of than anything else so you yeah. know, any given week I'm shaping more Blackbirds than any other board in the whole range so yeah. yeah. Well, that's so, really good. What else you got there buddy? Um, I've just got my regular short boards. Like, I've got a, a 510 skimitar yeah, okay. uh, with a swallow tail. It's 19 by 2 and 3 sixteenths. Um, it's just a pretty standard skimitar. Like I've just been riding these as my short boards. I ride these. This is all I've really got now. I've so got. This is, how much of the time would you be riding this? Oh, 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> really? So this is your favourite board now? Unless it was 10 foot or, yeah. But even so, I, I rode my previous one, which was only two inches thick in at Sanua when it was eight foot and it went great. And I wouldn't have swapped it for anything in the world, so. Okay, and uh, we worked on this a bit together as well, like with a couple other guys and team uh, team riders and also the guys in the shop. And then we developed this scimitar model and it's, we talked about it before with Tara Christie, but it's a wider shortboard with a pulled in tail, pulled in shortboard nose, shortboard rocker but it's just got that width to it, and it's got that real curve in the plan shape, and that's how Glenn Brady, one of the judges here this weekend for Noosa Board Riders, actually named it the scimitar. There's a scimitar sword that's got a very similar shape. Oh, the, there you go. The tail of that board, and that's how we got the name scimitar. Yeah. GB won a $100 gift voucher at the shop for naming the board. Oh, good on him. Yeah. I so, find it's really good with that curvy rail. It sort of fits in the wave in a different kind of way than my regular short boards. I used to ride 6 one, 18 and a half, two and two and an eight. Uh, with the pintail, which I've still got a couple of those, but um, I find that these fit in the wave in a different way and they allow you to do sort of carving turns where normally you'd have to do a, a snap turn, so you can you can really be on rail in a steep part of the wave where normally you wouldn't be able to be on rail. They also let you do like a really nice sort of tight arc, which I really like about these boards and I think they suit my style of surfing a bit too. Yeah, that's good. Like I was saying before, there's a lot of uh a lot of your good surfers, all of our good surfers, team riders and guys that just rip like Adam Johnson, Tara, um, Ash McDonald, everyone here this weekend, or not everyone, but a lot of the guys are riding the Scimitar model. I think Mr. Jordan's on one, he's loving his Ash has got one of my old ones, I think. Ash has got your old one, this is when it's called The Thing before we actually named it. So they do fit, the main The main benefit is just fitting in that tighter part of the wave. Yeah, I reckon, and they, you know, they're really good in little waves and they're more manoeuvrable, they're a little bit like, You've got to give them a little bit. I rode this one here at South Stratty on Tuesday and it was a good six foot and probably the heaviest waves I've ever had in Australia and probably could have used a couple of extra inches. <laughs> but um, 
on any other given day, like, yeah, they're great. How many barrels did you get? Uh, I got about four, but I was only there for about 45 minutes because I had to go to work. Rico. So. And, um, Rico, that's, mate, that's great feedback on the scimitar model. So what else you got there for us? I just got another scimitar. <laughs> oh, you got, oh, is that the one with the squash tar? Yeah, this is my favourite board in the whole world. This is your favourite board in the world? Yeah, this board's so much better than anything else in the whole world. No <laughs> one's allowed to even touch this. So this is a special one? Yeah. So what? Is this the one you're going to be surfing against Lockie today? Yeah, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. It's a bit thicker than my other one, so my first um, scimitar I got was by two inches, which I thought was, I thought that was the way to go with them, but um, you know, after talking to Reese, we've made them a bit thicker. I don't know if you can see the rail, but... They've got a real boxy rail, so they've got a, a sort of flatter deck and a real boxy rail, but you keep the thickness down, so not much thickness, but keep that foam in the flat deck and the, and the boxy rail. Yeah, and I find that that makes this one go. This one just goes really quick. Having that um, that squash tail means it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit looser, but but sort of not in a bad way. I don't know how to really explain that, but yeah. Well, um, like I was saying before, like with Slater and Dane Reynolds and some of those other guys that are riding similar sort of shapes, you can see they've favoured that that squash tail as well. So yeah, keep that bit of width just through the tail of the board as well. Well, I was looking at, I rode a couple of um, B Derbages boards. He's he's got like a new shape that's sort of like a copy of that dumpster diver. And I was talking to him about tails and he was he was saying, look, just go your normal tail. Like, don't worry about having a swallow if you don't normally get a swallow. So I thought I'll get a squash and I've ordered a pintail as well. So I'm going to try a few things out, but so far so good. The squash is going unreal. Okay, well, thanks for your time. We'll talk to you later on, buddy. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks, buddy.